Is this thing on? Yeah. All right. So, morning, afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is that you are watching this. Um, it's June 8th when I'm recording it, and um, I wanted to make a quick video on what it is that I'm packing for the trip because we've been getting a lot of questions, Emmy and I, on what to pack, what to bring, what to wear. Should I bring this? Should I bring that? How cold is it going to be? Are we actually going to get rained on? Those kind of things. So um, I wanted to show you what it is I'm bringing. And that's my uh, duffel bag, you know, just my gym bag. That's everything that I need clothing wise uh, for the 11 day trip up and back to Norway. So um, let me just open her up here. Now, the beauty of this bag is that I sized it to fit inside of my, my saddle bag, my hard storage on the side of my bike, so it will fit in there. So I don't have to worry about this being rainproof because it's gonna be in the bike, not strapped down to it. So, I just wanted to show you. Um, first thing I've got packed is two pairs of riding shorts. As Eric, Emmy, Amy know, I like to just wear uh, gym shorts underneath my riding pants. And that way I don't get too hot and I'm not wearing just boxers underneath and stuff like that. So um, in case it is warmer or I don't feel cold on that particular day, I'm going to put on gym shorts underneath my riding gear. Um, speaking of shorts, here's five pairs of boxers. Um, I also picked boxers where if you noticed, there's no uh, seams directly underneath the butt cheek. You know, girls, you probably don't have that tr trouble, but I've worn some pretty uncomfortable boxers over long distance riding that cuts off the circulation if there's a seam right underneath the butt, uh, like the, the big butt muscle. <laughs> so um, I picked uh, boxers that are just smooth, um, you know, and, and they're not going to cause that sore spot. Speaking of five, that's kind of how I picked everything. Five t-shirts, just normal cotton Hanes t-shirts. Um, let's see, going along with the idea of five, five pairs of socks, and these are all tall socks, but I varied the thickness, you know, we got some thick socks, medium socks, really thin socks, depending on if it's hot, cold, medium, I'm kind of like Goldilocks when it comes to riding. Um, so yeah, five pairs of socks, five pairs of uh, t-shirts, five boxers, um, and I figure, yes, it's an 11 day trip, but I'll do laundry somewhere, you know, in the middle of all this. So, um, I also brought a set of pajama pants, you know, just for uh, wearing around the campsite, or if it is really cold at night, um, that way I can sleep in them in my sleeping bag. Speaking of cold, uh, I, I have some base layers, two pairs of them actually. So here's a top and a bottom for base layer, another top and bottom for base layer. And I probably could have just gotten away with just one set of base layers, but um, if one set soaked, I want to be able to change into another pair and they're dry and good to go. So um, these are thin, they're not you know the bulky long johns that my grandpa used to wear. These are thin. They're supposed to be a base layer that's, you know, just meant to keep the, the, the cold out, the warm in, and not be so bulky where, you know, it could absorb a bunch of water or um, make it hard to move, you know, if it's tight underneath my riding pants or riding jacket. Um, speaking of pants, one pair of jeans, uh, just for the days that we're going to be off the bike and hiking. Um, and for top warmth, I have... Uh, two pairs or two long sleeve shirts they're fleeces as Emmy likes to call them and I like wearing those um, you know sleeping too I could sleep in these but that's just in case it got too cold uh, for just a normal t-shirt so those are the clothes and they all came out of my, my duffel bag um, so moving on the, the motorcycle gear is probably the most important out of all this of course my riding boots, these are waterproof up to uh, right here, this little seam. So, you know, my uh, riding pants come down here. So is my rain suit, they come down to here. So I should be okay on the boot side of things. 
I will treat the boots though just before we go because they are some form of leather in areas so um, I'll treat them with uh, weatherproofing spray before we go and then here's my riding pants um, you know these are just a good set of motorcycle riding pants they're breathable you know they got vents I can open up expansion joints leather on the wear spots and um, I do have a liner for these that I forgot to uh, show you here but I can zip in the liner and um, you know it, it goes all the way down to the pant leg so if it does get cold I can um, not only put on my base layers but put the, the inner liner of my pants in um, let's see here jacket this is my riding jacket um, again it also has an inner liner that I can zip inside here and they've got full length sleeves that go all the way down on the inner liner um, so this is my jacket it's made uh, pretty well for like almost every temperature up to I don't know, let's say 95 degrees Fahrenheit down to freezing I've worn this um, and it is water resistant but it's not waterproof you know it if we just get caught in a quick little rainstorm I'm fine but if we are caught in a downpour all day this is gonna soak through eventually I mean it's Cordura um, which is that waterproof breathable membrane but it's not um, I'm sorry it's water resistant breathable membrane so it's not waterproof it will eventually soak all of that up um, which is why I brought a actual waterproof rain suit for the trip and um, that will go over the jacket because I sized it for an extra large which I'm not usually an XL I'm usually a large or a medium so that will go over my jacket along with the riding pants or the uh, rain pants excuse me so anyway um, on to gloves actually here quickly um, here's my ball of clava this is for underneath the motorcycle helmet um, just in case it does get that cold I'm not anticipating it to be that cold the last time I wore this I was wearing it in 28 degree weather so uh, I don't anticipate us seeing that but I'm bringing it anyway just in case um, so for gloves I've got three uh, different weather temperatures or different temperature grades of gloves um, I'm hoping not to need these these are the warm gauntlets these are windproof and good for <laughs> when I need the balaclava 20 degree weather 30 degree weather I don't wear these very often but I'm bringing them anyway just in case um, hopefully we'll be wearing these the most these are really thin breathable you know touch screen type of gla uh, gloves a little bit of armor but they're not meant for rain they're not meant for anything beyond you know below 65 degrees they're a nice summer warm weather type of riding uh, glove you know for days like this and I'll be wearing them as soon as I'm done making this video because I'm going riding um, anyway I do think I will be wearing these the most on the trip um, these are my Gore-Tex gloves these are fully waterproof um, and these are what I wore on my saddle sore the most so if you're gonna buy a nice set of gloves buy something like this you know leather palm that you know breaks in nice you can feel the the throttle and the brake really well um, and that's got uh, Gore-Tex membrane everywhere this is waterproof for a long long time so we'll probably need that because I've been looking at the weather forecast and sure enough um, we're gonna be getting rain on so let's take a look here um, here's Hamburg Germany uh, this is a little bit further north than us and um, if we look you know I can only see out 10 days so this is only for you know informational purposes only but you can kinda tell that the temperatures are somewhere in the mid 70s during the day uh, you know mid 50s at night so not too bad when we get into um, the tip of Denmark this is where we're catching the ferry to cross over into Norway um, again mid 60s during the day mid 50s at night this is where we're gonna be sleeping in a hotel so it doesn't really matter that much but I do see a lot of Sun this is kinda nice to see hopefully this uh, keeps going 
you know, into the trip because we can't even see out that far yet. So let's look at uh, Oslo, Norway. A um, little bit warmer, mid 70s, low 70s during the day, and then mid 50s at night. Not too bad. Uh, some showers, thunderstorms here and there. Um, if, as we get into the middle of Norway on our trip, uh, same as Oslo, pretty much, you know, mid to high 60s and 50s at night. But when we get into Trondheim, this is where we're a little bit further north. This is close to Hell, Norway. Um, look at rain, 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 rain. <laughs> Um, but it does get colder, of course, you know, low 60s now during the day, and this is where we start to dip into 40s, high 40s at night. Go even further north, you can tell it gets colder. Um, 59, 61, 62 degrees during the day, and it's dipping down into the mid 40s during the nighttime. So this is probably going to be our coldest night of camping, if I had to guess this far out, um, is Moe Rana. This is up by the Arctic Circle again. Now, looking at Stavanger, Norway, this is kind of a crapshoot this far out because we're not going to be here until July 3rd. So, I mean, today's June 6th or June 8th, I'm sorry. So, um, we can only really look at this for uh, informational purposes, but it's really close to a big body of water, so the temperatures aren't going to vary that much. You know, 60s during the day, mid 50s at night. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what to prepare yourself for uh, when you're packing your clothes. So make sure you've got a good sleeping bag when you pack that, and um, you should be good. So I wouldn't expect this to be a Jamaican beach vacation. So don't wear, <laughs> don't pack a whole bunch of warm weather clothes. You know, um, in your mind, think Lake of the Woods, Malac Lakes, Lake Superior, um, <laughs> you know, Canadian border uh, in in April, May and April, <laughs> pack for that. So hopefully that helped. And um, if you have any further questions, of course, let us know. We've got the big WhatsApp group messaging now, and um, all of us should be able to pitch in and help. So uh, let me know, and um, talk to you guys soon. Thanks.